Well, Happy New Year, YouTube. Uh, yeah, gonna be doing stouts, porters, and stuff like that today. Top 10, I couldn't put it down to 5. There were just so many, uh, yeah, stouts and porters, stuff like that. It was just what I drank this year. Alright, honorable mentions to start out with. Spider Bites, Boris the Spider, amazing Russian Imperial Stout, super roasty, super flavorful, really big, thick, absolutely loved it. Came in the craft beer advent calendar along with this one. Sagatuck's Blueberry Maple Stout, loved it. Uh, yeah, it was what it said it was, and it tasted just so amazing. Um, then, we got St. Ambrose Stout Imperial Rus, Russian Imperial Stout. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Had it just a few days ago, loved it. Then, McKellar's Beer Geek Dessert. Awesome artwork, for one. <laughs> yeah, I had this one in Edmonton. Decided to keep the bottle, just because I love McKellar's artwork. It's just so retarded. But then we've got Brew Dogs Tokyo Star. Loved this beer. Absolutely loved it. Um, it just wasn't super drinkable. Uh, I know it's coming in at 18% or something like that. But it was very hard to get down. The flavors were intense, but that's why it didn't make the top 10. Then Nognau's Imperial Stout, loved this beer, very inexpensive for what it is, uh, went down so smooth, yeah, awesome brew. Then some from De Molen, of course, all wicked beers, just awesome. I love De Molen's beers, and they're not the best, but they're all good. Uh, so many different styles they brew, and they do it all perfectly. But yeah, let's get into the top 10. Coming in at number 10 is Iron Fist Velvet Glove Oatmeal Imperial Stout. Absolutely amazing. Great mouthfeel on that one. Um, also inexpensive. I'm pretty sure I only paid like 10 15 for the bomber, something like that. Really beautiful beer. Then... Prairie's Artisanal Ales coming in at number 9, their Christmas Bomb. Yeah, this one was great. You Just so complex. It's brewed with, what was it again? Uh, some sort of peppers, I think? Or, I, I kind of forget, but just amazing. Also, the artwork is pretty awesome. But yeah, number eight, Garun Icelandic Stout. To this day, best beer I've had from Iceland <laughs> by far. Um, amazing. 11.5% uh, I think it was, uh, something like that, yeah. And didn't drink like it. It drank like a eight, seven or eight percent stout. Beautiful flavors in there, um, yeah. But it wasn't thin, it was Really, really beautiful. Uh, number seven is Heaven and Hell by D. Mullen. Awesome, awesome beer. Uh, fairly cheap, and it lasts 25 years. Uh, yeah, lots of flavors in this one, just the classic stout flavors. Just amped up a bit. Yeah, awesome stuff. Then we got Green Flash's Double Stout. It was sent to me by the Beer Zerker. Thanks a lot for this one. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. It was like eating chocolate brownies. Um, just biting into chocolate fudge or like a double chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, loved it. Super chocolatey stuff. But let's get into the top five. All right. At number five, from the craft beer advent calendar, brewed specifically for it. They might be bottling it, but who knows. Flying Monkey St. Beatnik. Absolutely beautiful chocolate stout. Came in at 7.7%. 7 
and it had the flavor of just a huge imperial chocolate stout, you know. Actually tasted like chocolate too. And still smells like chocolate. Yeah, beautiful stuff. Um, yeah, awesome beer. It is what it says it is. It's chocolate and it's a stout. The chocolate was like uh, drinking hot cocoa and then mixing that with a beautiful stout. Yeah. But uh, at number three, four, <laughs> at number four is Big Bad Baptist by Epic Brewing. Stout with cocoa nibs and coffee added and aged in whiskey barrels. Part of their Exponential series. This was batch 50. Yeah, this, that was just insane. Amazing beer. Loved it. Everything about it. Just phenomenal stuff. Um, so complex. And usually coffee stouts are just so like punching you in the face constantly. But this wasn't really beautiful. Then, at number three, Horizon Tokyo Black by Brewdog, McKellar, and Nogne E. Yeah, amazing. Amazing stuff. Expensive for, like, s such a small bottle. It was around 17 or 18 bucks. But, uh, yeah, worth it to try it once, honestly. Beautiful stuff. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, just one of those beers that overwhelms you with flavor, and I'm glad it was in a smaller bottle, because <laughs> a big 750 or 650 of it would have been way too much. But yeah. And at number two, I didn't keep the bottles, but two beers are tied for it. Courage, Russian Imperial Stout. Uh, just incredible. Uh, gave that one a 10 out of 10. Beautiful beer. Loved everything about it. Uh, the perfect Russian Imperial Stout. Um, super fruity, super chocolatey, some nice coffee roastiness. Awesome. And joining it for the number two spot is Odin's Tipple from Honbregiriet. I think that that's just perfect as well. Uh, for how sweet and fruity and beautiful the Courage's Russian Imperial Stout was, this was its exact opposite. Uh, um, just an insane, harsh, crazy Imperial Stout. Classify it as a Russian Imperial Stout, but it's, uh, they call it a North Star Ale. But yeah, that's an awesome beer. And number one, gave it a nine and three quarters, but I should have given it a ten because it was absolutely perfect. Nothing I want more in life right now is to try this one again. Smoking Wood by The Brewery. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> so friggin' beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, what was it again? Smoked Imperial Rye Porter. Aged in bourbon barrels, coming in at 4, 14% alcohol, just perfect in my opinion. It was just amazing. You got all of the components balanced basically perfectly, and then a huge amount of like coffee, chocolate, stuff like that, dominating everything. Yeah, I don't know. Man, eh, it's hard to explain. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the top 10 list. Let me know what your favorite stouts, porters, darks, uh, stuff like that were for this year. Till the next time, cheers.